Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and greetings to everyone. Honorable Chief of EB Organization, Dr. Amy Nurjasmi Mkes. Honorable Co-Founder of Media Medical Community, Mrs. Fani Cynthia Rahmi Mkep. Honorable the Moderator and four speakers from three countries, Fatimeh Gotso Gotsi, MST from Iran, Leila Mustafi PhD, SCMC from India, Tias Kusumaningrum SCAP, Nurse MCAP from Indonesia, and Mr. Kamal Kasra SKM MKIH PhD from Indonesia. Especially to all the participants who have joined in this Zoom room. Welcome to International Seminar Session 2 with the theme Healthy Family Planning and Forming Healthy and Normal Mindset of Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Postpartum, conducted by Media Medical Community. I am Devi Noviana Rifani as the Master of Ceremony for this event, and we are very glad to meet you in this seminar. Praise to God for all His grace to let us join the seminar to gain more knowledge from extraordinary speakers. First of all, as this seminar is conducted by Media Medical Community, please welcome the co-founder of Media Medical Community to deliver her welcoming speech to Mrs. Fani Cynthia Rahmi and Kep. Time is yours. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, we would like to say thank you to all speakers and all participants attending in this seminar. This seminar is the second session uh, on this event for today. So I would like to, to announce that the second seminar is starting. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are about to start the main agenda of this seminar. Therefore, we would like to invite the moderator to lead the discussion and the speakers to deliver their presentation as well. The discussion will be led by the moderator, Ms. Rima Wiranfiona Mkes. Ms. Rima Wiranfiona Mkes is a graduate of Erlanga University of Indonesia in Reproductive Health 2020. She is also a writer and content editor related to parenting, character building, and health. She has already released five books in which two of them were a result of collaboration with the government. She is also active in becoming surveyor in some researches. So without any further ado, please welcome Ms. Rima Widenfiona, MKS. Terima kasih kepada MC. Allow me to use both of languages, Indonesian and English. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Selamat siang, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Welcome to the International Online Seminar with the theme Healthy Family Planning and Forming a Healthy and Normal Mindset of Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Postpartum. Honorable to the great speakers, midwife Leila Mustafi, PhD, HCMC from India, midwife Fatem Ekotsi, MSc from Iran, Bapak Kamal Kasra, SKM, MKIH, PhD from Indonesia, Ibu Tias Kusumaningrum, SCAP Nurse MCAP from Indonesia. Praise be to God because of His grace, we can join this seminar to enhance our knowledge. Distinguished speakers, participants, and ladies and gentlemen, we inform you, seminar participants can ask questions during these presentation sessions, either via Zoom or YouTube channel. Please type your name, institution, or city of origin, and the question addressed to which speaker. Peserta dapat mengajukan pertanyaan melalui kolom Zoom atau YouTube dengan mengetikkan nama, asal kota atau institusi, dan nama pembicara yang dituju. Silakan menggunakan bahasa Indonesia karena nanti kami akan bantu menerjemahkannya. Dear speakers, we inform you that each speaker will deliver material for 20 minutes and after that, at the end of the sessions, it will be continued with discussion sessions. All right, might I now invite the first speaker, midwife Leila Mustafi. She is registered at licensed midwife with master degree of psychology at PNU University and master IT management in medical at Tehran University. She has rich experience as senior consultant midwife, international midwifery trainer and lecturer, and international midwifery project manager at Kasra Specialist Hospital. She also been trainer of psychology birth intensive and researcher in psychological safe birth through midwifery. She is going to give us presentations on the topic providing a safe and comfortable normal delivery. Midwife Leila, time is yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Salam alaikum. Ahlan wa sahlan. And um, very nice to see all of you beautiful face and shining, glowing girls and gents. So. Thank you so much, Rima, for inviting me and for your nice uh, introduction. Uh, thank you from Media House for making this fantastic, fabulous meeting. It is an honor for me to participate in your Jakarta International Seminar. Uh, so I don't want to uh, introduce myself because Rima uh, introduced me. And just I want to add that nowadays I'm uh, living in India and I have project uh, management and counseling for uh, midwifery led care units in India. So uh, I start with my presentation to talk about how midwifery work in different countries. Is it possible I share my PowerPoint, please, Rima? Yeah. Can you please give me access to share my PowerPoint? Thank you. OK, please commit it to low share screen. Yeah, Thank you. Do it. Thank you, yes. I have to go to the desktop, I guess. Where is the desktop? Wait one minute, I can't hear. One minute, sorry. Just one minute. Okay. Thank you to being patient with me because I'm on the road, unfortunately, and I'm trying to connect it properly. Uh, midwife Leila, how about yeah. if the committee help you to share screen? Yeah, I'm getting access to that. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay, I can see. Oh, okay, great, nice. Can you make it open? Yeah, one moment, please. 
now it is sharing. Thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about providing, uh, thank you, providing comfortable and safe normal birth. Uh, as a midwife, as a consultant midwife, we have many issues in different countries and uh, we have to know what uh, is safe birth for each country because each fun uh, country, they have safe birth uh, definition. I want to tell you about my experience, about working in UAE in Dubai. Safe birth was uh, providing uh, antenatal care according mother's demand. In other countries like Iran, safe birth was providing privacy and individual care for mothers. For other countries like Georgia, I was working, it was uh, meaning you give normal birth without cheer and episiotomy. And the other country like India, safe birth means Either with low invasive medicalized interference. At if not get meaning without safe pregnancy, if we want to provide safe birth, first of all, we have to provide them safe pregnancy. Because if a mother can get safe pregnancy services, we can provide them in proper way of safe birth. In some country like Georgia, safe pregnancy means taking care of their diet, diet, taking care of their psychological, emotional, and informative support. In UAE and Dubai, safe pregnancy means reduce mental and physical uh, complication like diabetic, like insulin-related issue, and overweight. In some country like Iran, Safe pregnancy means provide emotional support, and in India is providing informative support, prenatal, psychological, and emotional and informative support. So, first of all, first we should talk about safe pregnancy. Safe pregnancy care should provide by midwives who are experts in that. Most mothers in some Western countries and some other countries that I was engaged in their midway free project, they were following their prenatal care by gynecologists and obstetrician. Obstetrician, they are very good for complicated pregnancy, for complicated birth, but they don't have time for counseling for normal birth and preparing class and childbirth class. The other issue is very important to provide the uh, foundation of safe birth is prenatal services and support. According to every country culture, every country expectation, we have to provide these services and support it. And birth support is the most important issue that we were engaging in different countries. Some countries like um, India, still we have medicalized birth. So we need birth support. We need husband, doula, midwife, and birth provider. In some country like Dubai, UAE in Dubai, and Dubai, we need some midwifery care. In Iran, we need more facilitated LDR room. In uh, other country like Georgia, we need more experienced midwife to support birth and stay time with, spend time with mothers. And about birth team, yes, for having a safe birth, we need a safe birth team. Team is the most important things that a midwife and a consultant and a midwife leader should provide to guarantee mother safe birth. Team is including gynecologists, obstetrician, neonatologists, your midwife assistant, your labor suit midwife, your uh, doula, your prenatal care midwife, your workout midwife, and all together should have very nice teamwork that can provide this safe for mothers. Family support is very, very important component of safe birth. Why I came to this issue? Because in each country, I found family tea, family support is the most important element to provide safe birth. In some country like India, 
family bonding is, has so much meaningful. In Asian country, we need family support. But first, we have to provide this facility and training and uh, proper sector to help the family to be engaged and get information and support. And birth facilities. Birth facility depends to the culture and demand of the clients in each country. Some countries, they like to have privilege and individual birth rooms, birth facilities and services. Pregnancy and birth in different countries. As I mentioned here, I was working as a uh, mentoring for uh, midwifery student of uh, University of South Australia, Dubai government, Iran University, and uh, Georgia David Tivildiani University, and now it is in Apollo Cradle Hospital in India. So I found that the most important element to provide safe birth is in, to consider training our trainers. In my project, I was trying to provide the best midwifery training for the midwife or nurses. Some nurses, they are working in midwifery-led midwifery care, but they are nurses, they are not qualified as midwife. So in some countries, we started 18 months training course for nurses and qualified them as a practitioner nurse midwife. In between, we have to increase our independence practice for midwife. As soon as a, a midwife can provide independent practice for mothers, they can get more engaged together and get more support from midwifery counseling uh, uh, clinics. In Iran, we have independent midwife, but in UAE, in India and Georgia, we don't have independent midwife. So most of the mothers should go under uh, supervision of gynecologist and obstetrician and then get the care from the you know, midwife or nurse. So that's why we need to promote and increase this facility in this country for getting safe birth. Midwifery training, as a generally, we have different midwifery training in different countries. Some countries we have direct midwifery for bachelor of midwifery like Iran, like UK, like Sweden. Some countries like Georgia, like Dubai, like India, they have only nurse. So for these countries, we have to try to um, implant 18 months course to help them to promote themselves to being as a nurse midwife and take their help to promoting midwifery in those countries. Maybe we are not able to to um, start direct midwifery in those countries, but we can uh, promote our nurse staff to work as a competent nurse midwife. The other things that is very important about giving safe birth is midwifery service. I kept different countries picture here, as you see in the top of the picture. I am with my mothers who delivered their baby in Georgia and our gynecology team. We are standing all together and we providing this service all together, not only as a midwife, as a gynecology, we do this rounding in the morning together. And mothers, they will understand they are under cover of a groups. As you see the other picture I'm keeping in the down of this slide, this is from India. I'm with gynecology partner. We are sitting together and training mothers and expectant together because these services in those countries should be with gynecology. But anyhow, we will call it midwifery services till we reach to those direct entry midwife and midwifery, independent midwifery clinic. We need to have some prenatal services. You see this picture I kept here. Prenatal service is depends to different culture, different countries and different demands of the people. This picture, it is aquanatal exercise in India. As you see, we are providing them prenatal exercise in the water and with their partner. In India, in some part of India, the culture they accept to do exercise with their partner and they need more emotional support. When they do exercise together, they feel more relaxed and this bonding will be more intense. So we have to be creative, we have to be innovative. Which prenatal service for which culture, for which demand in which country you can innovate. 
because nowadays new generation looking for the innovative and caring services. Prenatal services, like before just checking normal vital sign and fetal heart rate, now it is, doesn't have any place between this new generation. So we have to be more uh, innovative and creeper, design new prenatal service in our different countries. And train to trainees, we want to provide safe birth for mothers, but we need some trainers that be updated. How to do this training? Training before, it was very, very traditional training. It was only a student and teacher, but we are trying to innovate and make new mo module for training that students and midwife, graduated midwife, be more engaged in training and they understand mm -hmm. practically. This is what is the reason I got awarded from University of South Australia, because they found my training very innovative. Because as students and graduated midwife and nurses, they need to touch, they need to feel the meaning of pregnancy. They should understand from their spirit, their soul, that what is midwifery, what mother needs. And according to that, they will provide care. We are not that old and traditional doctors that just read some references and be midwife. Now it is midwifery is knowledge of spirit, is knowledge of culture, is knowledge of society. So we have to promote our midwifery skill and our training model. And what about safe birth? Safe birth. In different countries, we should provide some media awareness project to public. In Iran, I made some water birth movie with Iran national media and according to Islamic culture, they covered mother completely and showed complete safe birth room in water birth to, to a public. Because maybe in Iran and other Islamic cultures, like in Dubai, I was engaged in our media awareness project. We were trying to show to these Muslim mothers that water birth, it's not like Western movie that you saw you should be naked and no privacy, no. We can modify according our Islamic culture. You can have privacy, you will be covered fully and you don't have any other people to look at you. So we have to be very aware, we have to be very, very smart to bring media in our awareness project modify our new birth culture and show to people what is safe birth. Show it according culture, according our religions and according privacy. Then mother will like to have these services. Um, but about emotional and mental health in pregnancy. It's very, very important as you see the picture from my clinic. Mothers need to find these services in pregnancy and birth. They need emotional and mental health. Midwifery is not only tough practice. It is engagement mentally and emotionally with mother during pregnancy and birth. You should engage with mother, with her husband, with her family, and let her interact her feeling her fear, her anxiety, understand her. They don't want a midwife as a robot. They need human, they need understanding. And about economical health, I kept one of my picture from Iran again. And you see, this is a one luxury birth. In some countries, they like to have very good services like this husband standing, mother standing, doula standing in the front. My gynecologist team is standing back and my doula, uh, my midwife assistant with me. It means economically maybe increase for them. But if they like, we can decrease team charges and give them some uh, guarantee that economically you will not go that much for, you will not go for many uh, affordable births. We can reduce your packages with the same team in different quality hospital, but the same service. So we should be very smart as a midwife, like a business lady, businessman. We should provide different birth packages that be affordable by our clients. But we consider teamwork, we consider privacy, LDRO. 
And with free clinics and care, as I kept my mothers in Georgia, as you see that we have to try to be more flexible with clinics and care for our midwifery services. Sometime in Georgia, as you see, I went and I had to visit seven mothers in the meantime after the birth. So we should be very uh, flexible to find a new way to give these services even in that situation. Maybe in some country like Georgia, we don't have midwifery clinic and you have visit eight mother in one small hospital in one unit, but you have to be like a manager. You have to be like a leader. You have to give some uh, idea to your staff, to your hospital, to your team, that how to manage them and take care of their privacy. And as you see, there is a birth services. This is one mother from Iran, I kept this picture. Birth services should be according to mother demand and mother culture. As you see, this mother in Iran is a very religious mother and she wants to have labor in water. She wants to have uh, water birth. I covered her completely because she didn't want even her body to be show up in front of her husband. We have to respect them, their culture, their beliefs covered completely as you see, and I innovate this model. Maybe you cannot even think how I found this design. I imagine how I can take care of her privacy and let her have what her birth. And as you see, this mother, she has MS, multiple sclerosis case. We could give her safe birth with this facility as you see, completely safe pool, completely cover body because of her uh, belief and providing some facility that keep her safe during birth. And family support is very, very important. I kept my aquanatal class in India. Family support difference in different country, different belief, different culture. In India, for example, in that part, north of India, their culture is different by South. They like to do exercise together. Some countries like Iran, they do this exercise with couple in their private pool. In some country like UAE, we give them this exercise in water in their own beach in private privacy. So it depends what you like and what is innovative, what is new midwifery. Go and look for modern midwifery services that you can attract new generation and new clients to midwifery field and safe birth. Because safe birth doesn't have meaning yet in most countries. They don't know what is safe birth. And now it is because of many medicalized invasive normal birth, the most population they think safe birth is cesarean section. But you have to figure out that what is safe birth start from pregnancy and a sport culture it is the most important thing as a midwife and midwife consultant you have to aware your team and make your team a structure according to sport culture a sport culture should be described to your client client that is necessary it is mandatory to go to exercise during pregnancy according to your convenience and this is in india that we did the same sport culture and we are trying to go through media uh, as you know, it is our India project and uh, I'm awarded by the Media House uh, because of I was ambassador of health and uh, media health programmer in Iran, Georgia and UAE, Dubai. So because of the water birth and safe, respected birth movie that I made as an independent birth, um, independent filmmaker, I was awarded from uh, Media House and Art College of India and I am one of the Julie team. Midwifery led care projects in India, it is in two uh, parts. We are working in urban area and rural area. Urban area, uh, it is for some VIP services, private services for birth and pregnancy. And rural area, as you see, we are trying to start with basic family health uh, training because they don't want that much luxury services. So as you see, we have many girls, many mothers, many young women. We are going weekly to rural area, teach them about family health, about sustainable family, women and girl health care and pre marriage consultation. So this awareness prepared them for safe birth and increase their demand to going for safe birth. 
Another project we are doing in India is childbed education and informative support. As you see, we have a group of uh, educated mothers and husbands They are sitting and we are talking about water birth because they don't have any idea about safe birth or water birth. And I'm focusing in water birth for those society because they like to have some special birth and less painful. Actually, most of this uh, uh, group level of the people who are in that level of society, they like Iran and uh, in India, they're looking for very high developed birth and less invasive and very safe and more comfortable. So water birth providing them comfortable birth and they like to know what will happen and what will be good. This is one of the classes and some classes that we're providing for mothers and couples childbirth classes for cover in India that we do emotional and psychological physical support in those classes. We ask husband to accompany their mother, uh, the mother and they try to engage with this massage technique, helping physiological and psychological and emotional support. Husband need to be trained. So every childbirth classes should be with couple both together. And it is our hospital birth unit project, birth unit project in India. As you see, we have a, we are a team of specialist doctors. We are working as a multidisciplinary team, and we had water birth for mother. Uh, after birth, we had a skin to a skin contact very fast, and even after that, father he has a skin to a skin contact and cord clamp uh, cut by uh, father. It is our project in India, our training project. Our mission is train to train. It is Apollo Hospital that we do our training in India, and we try to do train to train. We trying in our mission is rural family health awareness camp in rural area. We have urban aquanatal services. Another mission in India is urban water birth services and media health awareness program that we are working from long back. Our project plan in this picture that you see, it is one in Iran and one in India, is trained to educators to educate new curriculum models, continue the philosophy and content across the country, across the India. And training should be culturally and occasionally sensitive. Thank you for your time and attention today. This is my uh, picture with my uh, lovely team from Iran. And a special thanks to Media Medical, Media Indutana, Rima Viren, beautiful girl, LEC team, really excellent center team, and our mother company, Samco from UK. Please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. I kept all of my contact detail here. And anytime you're most welcome for any counseling or any sharing and experience and knowledge with us in India project and other countries. Thank you so much. I hope I finish in my 20 minutes, uh, Mr. Rima. Or I want yeah, yeah. to, yeah, keep some time for question answer uh, if uh, if you have any Q&A session. Okay, thank you, midwife Leila. You also thank beautiful. You. And the material presented by you, motivating health professional to provide a comfort delivery process. And about the questions, we will answer in the end of the session. So we will continue to the second speaker. Okay, we continue on the second speaker, midwife Fatima Gatsi. The complete MSc in midwifery counseling at Azad Medical University. She having more than six years of experience as a midwife in Bevor Health Center and the Koda Hospital in Kaswin, Iran. She currently serves as an instructor of at Com Medical University, where she trained midwifery students on subject mainly focused on maternity care. She accepted a precious letter from Albert Healthcare Institute as the best oral presentations about the event of childbirth preparation. And on recent virtual international day of the midwife, she presented oral presentations about the impact of childbirth preparations on fear 
of normal vagin vaginal delivery in Iranian pregnant women. And I repeat again, she accepted appreciation letter from Albers Healthcare Institute as the best midwife in 2010. In this occasion, she will deliver a presentation which is enabling pregnant women to enjoy pregnancy without fear. Midwife Fateme, time is yours. Hello, hello to all the others who participate in this fascinating seminar. Honestly, I'm so happy for having me here. Thank you, dear Rima, for uh, introducing me. It was completely, uh, thank you. Uh, um, in this step, uh, we want to talk about a popular problem in pregnancy, I mean fear. And uh, we want to talk about the main reasons of this problem and uh, how we can uh, enable an enjoyment uh, pregnancy without fear. I decided to describe uh, my uh, review article about this uh, problem in Iran. Let me to share uh, my um, presentation a slide. Can you see it? Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, yeah that's great. Unfortunately, according to global survey, about 20 to 80% of pregnant women suffer from a, a medium level of uh, fear during pre their pregnancy. And notably, about 20% of uh, these uh, pregnant women, especially perimenopause women, show high level of uh, fear in their pregnancy. If we want to discuss about uh, the main reasons of uh, fear during the pregnancy, we should consider this rule. The reason of fear is completely associated with the age of pregnancy. For example, in the first step of pregnancy, most of women worry about losing their baby, especially if they had a, a miscarriage or infertility problem uh, experience. And also during this time, most of women worried about the health of their babies. They have analyzed several uh, medical tests and waiting for uh, getting this result. Uh, definitely uh, this waiting uh, increased their nervous again. In the middle step, when pregnant touch the first fetal movement, they get worried uh, about uh, they won't be able uh, to care their child or uh, love them enough, fear of not being a good mother. But the main reason of uh, feeling fear uh, during pregnancy is about uh, childbirth, normal childbirth or NVD. Most women concerned about this uh, problem uh, just in the last trimester of their pregnancy, but sometimes uh, it is a general problem uh, in whole pregnancy. According to the data, fear of childbirth is mainly associated with increased the number of cesarean section, uh, and which is one of the important negative consequences of this problem. As we know, childbirth is a natural phenomenon and its mechanism is a spontaneous uh, process with no need uh, for any intervention. Just in some cases, we need valid indications are required to intervene in a natural childbirth. For example, when a cesarean section is necessary to keep a mother and newborn alive. But as we know, uh, there are just a few cases that we need uh, these kinds of uh, operation. But unfortunately, as you can see uh, in this bar chart, the percentage of live births delivered by cesarean section uh, have risen in all parts of the world. For example, in Western Europe uh, and uh, Africa, Asia, it doesn't matter. In 2010, a review study showed that out of 137 countries, 54 countries had a cesarean rate of below 10%. 
41 countries between 10 and 15 percent. Why? In 69 countries, this rate was recorded a bit greater than 15 percent, which is higher than, higher than the acceptable rate according to WHO. Notably, uh, in that study that I mentioned, the name of uh, this study here, Iran with 41.9% uh, was recorded as the second country with the highest rate of cesarean after Brazil. Other studies in Iran show that more than 70% of cesarean section had no valid reason. 92% of such cases were performed following the request of pregnant women, pregnant women who were scared or concerned about the side effects of uh, NVD or natural uh, labor. Uh, for example, Chariot et al. in uh, 2002 and Endron et al. in 2017 showed that, respectively, about 71% and 81% uh, of uh, mothers choose the cesarean section over than uh, natural uh, uh, childbirth just because of tocophobia. Fear of childbirth or tocophobia may result from fear of the pain of labor, prenatal injury, and newborn death or injury. Fear of childbirth is mainly associated with increased labor pain, prolonged uh, delivery process, and unpleasant labor experience. This fear uh, could also be due to postpartum depression, uh, postpartum anxiety. And also, it can increase the surgical interventions like uh, section and uh, negative delivery outcomes. It is of note that fear of uh, natural childbirth is more common in parus women, as I said uh, before in the first slide. Uh, fear of uh, natural childbirth is a, an unexperienced event and uh, this group of uh, women internalize other unpleasant experience of uh, women. So uh, they uh, insist for uh, having a cesarean section. So the fear becomes a fact cycle of pressing negatively and the least to increase the rate of uh, repeated cesarean section swiftly. That is uh, one of the important uh, negative consequences of uh, this problem. Okay, what should we do for this problem? Let's, um, uh, now we are uh, going to talk about uh, some beneficial strategy for uh, decreasing this problem. According articles, educating and uh, preparing pregnant women uh, for a uh, normal delivery is a great strategy to decrease the fear of pregnancy and also the rate of cesarean section two. The prenatal period education provides a valuable opportunity to uh, improve misconception and misinformation about childbirth reducing the fear of, uh, and uh, also increase the self-efficacy uh, of childbirth is uh, one of the important achievements of uh, this education. Unfortunately, for many years uh, in Iran, parental care included uh, only measuring height, weight, blood pressure, uh, and listening to heartbeat, justice. Education and consolation programs uh, on labor and better pregnancy control have been inadequate. For this reason, the Ministry of Health in Iran has been providing childbirth preparation uh, programs for pregnant women in 2014. This program is called uh, Preparation for Pregnancy Period uh, or uh, um, physiological delivery. Classes start at twin week of pregnancy and uh, are a session long and finish at the 13th of uh, pregnancy. 
as you can see in these uh, photos, uh, we apply, we are trying to apply various relaxation techniques and education and training methods. These courses aim to relieve pain during pregnancy and also reduce the fear and anxiety of mothers. Various uh, techniques and muscle and mental relaxation methods are examples of methods uh, in childbirth preparation programs. After the implementation of uh, this program, uh, just uh, here, in, uh, the index of cesarean section in country was decreased about 6% immediately and then it was constant for a long time. And about the effect of prenatal care courses on childbirth fear, I gathered some articles uh, that here we wanted to uh, review them and discuss about them. In the first one, they have shown that the level of anxiety during pregnancy and childbirth differs between uh, case and control with a statistically significant result. That was great. In another study, the score of anxiety, the pain in the transition phase, and the pain in the active phase, and the episiotomy pain were different statistically between the two groups. And also, uh, we have seen a positive effect of courses of pregnancy preparation uh, and the duration of labor and reduction of the cesarean section rate. And the positive effect of postpartum fatigue, depression, and backache resulting uh, from pregnancy. I should mention that uh, fears, uh, um, uh, uh, for uh, controlling this fear, there are some factors such as care workers, for example, midwife or obstetrics, or courses on childbirth preparation, information level of um, childbirth uh, is so important, and applying relaxation techniques uh, during childbirth and labor, and most importantly, psychological support from family and medical staff that uh, Dr. Mostofi mentioned in this uh, previous uh, uh, lecture, it is so important and they have a, a, a severe uh, impact on the level of fearing and uh, courage of women. These studies are in the line uh, with the WHO study, which investigated on 4,000 American women in 1988. The results show that the use of breast and massage techniques reduced the mother's fear and also pain and also rate of cesarean section and other complications. The final report included that uh, the important cause of uh, success is participate uh, in the pregnancy period courses comprehensively and coherently. But on the other hand, we have seen some studies that they have shown a vice versa results. For example, according to uh, Mehrabadi study, the fairly trained women of the intervention group increased significantly compared on the control group. It was so um, strange. And also, in the another article, the post-training score of fear was increased in trained uh, women. And unfortunately, in some study, uh, we have seen the you know, cesarean section of the group on train was unfortunately different. Uh, it wasn't different with the untrained group. It was suggested that uh, the courses a starting time and also little use of appropriate training uh, and relaxation techniques uh, and uh, different communities culture, this is so important, may explain the observed inconsistency uh, for uh, having uh, and uh, watching this vice versa result. I should mention that uh, 
uh, according a literature review in 2020, uh, that uh, it reported that only 30% of Iranian pregnant women participated in this national pro uh, program. Their lack of knowledge and access is one of the main reasons uh, which holding them from uh, participating in this national program. This program has been running for about seven years, but unfortunately, it applied just in some of the uh, measures uh, uh, Iran's cities. As a conclusion, I should mention that to decrease the rate of cesarean section and the fear of uh, natural childbirth, we need a long-term programs to improve negative attitudes towards NVD, we need, a long, uh, we, uh, we need a such uh, programs that uh, these classes started uh, and uh, was available for uh, pregnant women and also for uh, K-workers who uh, deal with NVD. It is so important, terrain for terrain air. Implementation uh, painless delivery techniques uh, such as uh, complementary medicine and aromatherapy, childbirth at that home and in water, uh, they are the amongst uh, methods that lead to success in most countries. And we hope that the um, adequate number of healthcare centers that uh, uh, they apply uh, physiological delivery services uh, increase in all uh, uh, cities of the, uh, and uh, they, uh, it was accessible for uh, all women in villages and in the cities. And also, uh, we advise and further research on developing new childbirth control, for example, hypnosis, oricotherapy, acupressure, and massage, how we can uh, and how much we apply such as these methods in our uh, pregnancy. And I should mention that uh, it is so important using uh, midwife counselors Midwife counselors play an influential role in reducing fear and anxiety and changing uh, the inappropriate culture of elective cesarean section. It is anticipated that a combination of midwifery knowledge and also consolating technique, which is a, a skill is offered by uh, midwife, uh, midwife counselors, uh, can considerably identify, manage, and uh, trade to cophobia. Uh, thank you, thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope it was uh, clear and it was useful for all of you. And also, uh, I wanted to uh, say uh, thank you to Media Medical and also Media Indotenia uh, for uh, uh, getting uh, this opportunity to me for uh, having uh, been here and to present uh, this article. Thank you. I'm uh, ready for uh, getting uh, your question uh, if we have uh, enough time. Okay, thank you, midwife Fatameh. As a woman, we should know that a pregnancy is psychology and normal for every woman. So we do not need to. Thank you. We do not need to fear. Baiklah, kita lanjutkan ke narasumber yang ketiga, Bapak Kamal Kasra. He is a lecturer at the Faculty of Public Health Universitas Andalas. He completed master degree of quality improvement in healthcare at Newcastle University Australia and philosophy doctor of community health at University of Kebangsaan Malaysia. He has served as head of health promotions and community empowerment section at the provincial health services in West Sumatra, Indonesia 2003 until 2010. Last year, he also been trainer of Imo Demo training for village post Yandu Kedres in Padang Municipality. 
Today, he will explain about prepare a healthy family to form readiness to be a wonderful parent. Kepada Bapak Kamal, kami persilahkan. Thank you very much, Wima. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. This afternoon, I'm very happy to join us. Thank you for your attention and, and invitation to me for this session. Thank you, Kutlak, Excellencies, for the who participants, especially for the speakers from India and Iran. Okay, let's go to the growth rate, zero standing by 2030. Okay, we have come to BP, a happy family to form readiness to be a wonderful parents. Hello, but this session, I choose the special subtopic about a collaborative strategy among public health nurses and midwives in health promotion to prepare the team for healthy marriage. Bye. Thank you, Professor. From Malaysia. Yes, if someone call me, can call 0813 and call and send email by kamakatra at gmail.com. So I have to start from the, what is the health promotion? The promotion is a process enabling people to with control over and improve their health. And then the combination of educational and environmental support for action and conditions of living productive to health. The goal of the health promotion is to develop the community behavior changing to the clean and healthy behavior. As we know until now, many, many problems of the cases include uh, COVID-19, but right now we speak about the how to prepare the teenagers to achieve the healthy family in the future. What is the reality of teenagers we have yet in merit preparation? Impossible right now. Up to now, sometimes many, many teenagers lack of information. What is the what what they have to prepare? Lack of knowledge and lack of capability to access the applied information fully. So the last one, lack of facility where they get some information and then to ask any any information so what should they know before getting married as we know midwives and then the other speaker also say to build the physical health and then the second one to prepare psychological health and the third one to develop social health what does it mean? The good physical health is, you know, nutrition, physical activities, but is it is a nutrition such as eating patterns, sleep patterns, to anemia prevention, and also stunting prevention in the future when they got married and, and when they deliver babies. The second one to prepare physical and digital health. Many, many teenagers are not ready to get pregnant. And sometimes also anxious about a childbirth and they're not willing to be breastfed because they want to be still happy and then still like a, a smile, like a teenagers, not, not like a, a mother's. Still, the third one to develop social health. If we go in ability to adapt to a new family, family to dysfunction, or they don't know what about the mother, how to be uh, adapt to their my my husband, how about the my mother in law and father in law. There is problem for them after get married. 
what should have providers do? As we know, nurse, midwives, and health provider, and uh, sorry, I mean uh, public health provider, all of us working together in the field. There is, we hope we'll do that, that but I think it's not uh, simple to say. Yeah, simple to say, but not easy to do. We also to be a caregiver, educator, educator, and researcher. So, what do nurses to do? What midwives? What the public health can do? Come on, nurses can educate, especially for the nita hygiene, psychology to prevent the nita tract infection, and such as. Many, many problems have to advise from nurses in the field. But what about the midwives? Also, many, many problems. How to prevent some problem in the mother's uh, pregnancy, like intrauterine growth retardation, intrauterine retardation, low birth weight, and will be stunting up to low birth weight. So, what about public health? The public health providers maybe can advise many, many people in the fields, in the Oceano, or in the Puskesmas area, about nutrition, to many using social media negative effect, to advocate key person in the field, and many, many them. So, how to collaborate among nurses, midwives, and public health providers? The first one, can teenagers pursue the development? The second one, to coordinate with the parents, teachers, and religious leader. As we know, in Indonesia, uh, most of us are religious, religious peoples. So sometimes we forget to join with the religious leader to advocate, to educate um, people especially for family and a teenager, yeah? We know Indonesia have a special teenagers for Shandu, but what about reality now? That is developed or no? So the second one, maybe we need to use media. We know special media, social media, there's traditional media, electronic media, and then print media. We know the social media, many, many information, but sometimes hoax. The hoax, but many teenagers below that, that information. So there is our important one to do. Let's can collaborate among nurse, midwives, and public health provider. So what is the promotion objective? So because will we do the health promotion, Let's try to, there is important one, be to inform, to advocate, to pursue, to motivate, to entertain, to, to influence easygoing. They just say inform, they, okay, I many, many come, many time to come to visit the teenagers and then teenagers group or mothers group, but only inform. But what they? The, the leader in the village or in the town, there is a forget or no. And then also to persuade by time by time and then to motivate. So the last one very important in her promotion is to entertain. Because to entertain important one to make the easy to receive the our information. The last one to inspire. If the, all of them collaborate together, inshallah, will be the success to be um, achieved, the uh, teenagers to be a mothers in health. It's needed the different strategy to achieve each objective. So what should be done? The first one, don't forget that all participants, maybe you are a nurse, your midwife or a provider or public health, don't forget the first one, health literacy. 
you have to have a skills, knowledge, and motivation. It's an important one. Some of the people, some of the health provider, many, many uh, capability to do, and they have many knowledge, but less motivation. So the second one, create the simple message. Some of them, some of us, to explain many, many message in one papers or in one poster, but very, very crowded. They don't, nobody in the street or nobody interest to see that. The third one, do a collaboration strategy. So what is the health literacy? Skill, knowledge, motivation, and capacity of person to access, understand, apprise, and apply information to make effective decisions about the health and health care and take appropriate action. So what the health provider need? Okay, let's the first one, self-confidence. Without skill, maybe self-confidence impossible. Second one, communication. As you know, communication, we need voice, we need verbal, and we need visual. Not only voices, not only verbal, but combined voice, verbal, and visual. The third one, advocacy. So the last one, using suitable media. As we know, we have a poster, we have a brochure, but in a way and when we have to use. Okay, so potential in health promotion. As you know, the third one, the three, the, the among of us, we have self potential. What is that? Face expression. Face expression can explore based on our understood or, or didn't understand or our say. The second one, body language. And the third one, vocal variety. So we may not repeatedly in one word. Third, so what about using media? Caregiver should understand how to use media. Where and where we use the poster, leaflet, and flip chart, etc. For example, like this when home visit, some of the uh, provider come to the, to the village, but just put the poster on the flat, on the bed, but no thoughts when talking. Much better, use like this. Yeah, you can keep the flip chart and then explain one by one in front of the small group. Don't be used the, the flip chart in the big group or in the class. So the last one, flip chart could be used in the group discussion. Okay, that's all my presentation today. I'll back to Prima. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bapak Kamal. Materinya sangat komprehensif dan sistematis. Jadi kita tahu bahwa peran dari tenaga kesehatan masyarakat, terutama menggerakkan untuk memberikan promosi kesehatan kepada masyarakat agar bisa untuk mempersiapkan generasi yang sehat dan kuat. Dan juga peran tenaga kesehatan masyarakat dalam mengajak tenaga kesehatan yang lainnya untuk berperan aktif dalam melakukan kolaborasi. We invite the last speaker, Ibu Tias Kusumaningrum. She is lecturer and program coordinator for Bachelor of Nursing, Department of Maternity and Pediatric Nursing, Faculty of Nursing, Universitas Airlangga. She complete her Master of Nursing at Universitas Airlangga. Her areas of interest are maternity nursing, women's health and reproductive health. She has had the opportunity to occupy several important positions, including the head of maternity nursing divisions, journal manager and faculty ambassador at the Faculty of Nursing, Universitas Erlangga. She has also been registered as a member of East Java Region Indonesian Maternity Nurse Association. 
She will give the presentations on independent postpartum care and increasing self-confidence to be a young mother. Kepada Ibu Tias, kami persilahkan. Kami ingatkan kepada para peserta untuk bisa mengajukan pertanyaan dengan mengetikkan nama, kemudian institusi atau asal kota, dan pertanyaan tersebut ditujukan ke pembicara yang mana. Silahkan ajukan pertanyaan melalui kolom Zoom atau kolom YouTube. Baiklah Ibu Tias, kami persilahkan. Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day, everyone, uh, to seniors, colleges, and all seminar participants. Uh, also, I would like to say thank you for the committee and also Ms. Lima. It is an honor for me to participate in this event and hopefully the knowledge that we discuss and learn today is useful for improving the health in the community. So uh, I will like to share my presentation. So on this occasion, I will share about the postpartum care at home and how to increase the confidence of young women. Uh, first of all, my presentation today will talk about the challenges experienced by postpartum mothers and postpartum care while at home and also increasing self-confidence for young women. I think uh, all of you already uh, know or learn these topics a lot, but I would like to uh, just remind again about, about, the, the, about the topic. So first, I want to share some of the challenges that are often experienced by postpartum mother. And why am I discussing this is that because we will not be able to provide care without really understanding what the mother uh, will face during this period. So uh, the postpartum challenges itself, it's an impos uh, the postpartum itself is an inseparable part of pregnancy and childbirth. And in these periods, I uh, need to be prepared before the delivery as, you, as the pres other presenter already mentioned before. Uh, these periods need to be prepared and to make mothers get a satisfactory postpartum experience. Uh, some of the challenges uh, faced by mothers include breastfeeding, uh, baby care, physical care, and how the role transition and make the family planning and health issues, other health issues related to postpartum, such as bleeding, preeclampsia, infection, uh, maybe for the not so good as a baby outcome, and not to mention the working life and, of course, the work from home, because work from home for uh, working mothers, uh, breastfeeding and also working mothers become uh, more challenging than what it's already had. So uh, when we talk about breastfeeding and feeding, we cannot forget the term about the exclusive breastfeeding. So exclusive breastfeeding has received tremendous attention in the last decade. Uh, exclusive breastfeeding is also scientifically uh, proven to play a 
a good role to improve babies' health. And uh, the development of science and technology then provides various facilities for mother who wants to uh, breastfeed exclusively. Uh, however, the achievement of exclusive uh, breastfeeding is still quite low uh, based on UNICEF data in 2020. The world effort achievement is less than 50%. Even in Indonesia, the achievement of exclusive breastfeeding is actually 66% uh, in 2020. So I think this is a joint success of both health workers, the community of exclusive breastfeeding activists and of course, mother who have the commitment and ability to make this happen. So, uh, give uh, mother uh, is it, uh, applause for, for this achievement. So, uh, we understand that breastfeeding is a uh, physio physiological thing, but that doesn't mean that breastfeeding can be done without difficulties. Uh, the condition of the mother and baby, as well as the environment, greatly affected the success of this uh, breastfeeding. Yeah, and there are various things that prevent mother from breastfeeding. Uh, many mother complain of insufficient insufficient milk production, uh, even when the postpartum only lasts than one week. In fact, uh, physiologically, uh, the amount of uh, breast milk production has been adjusted uh, to the needs and age of the baby. Uh, and of course, breast milk production can be increased by uh, fulfilling uh, adequate nutrition and fluid as well as uh, emptying the breast uh, regularly. Yeah. And then uh, during the breastfeeding period, uh, more than 40% of mother experienced breast engorgement in the first week of postpartum it's uh, usual and this is uh, usually caused by the poor breastfeeding patterns and technique and uh, sometimes it's because uh, the, the 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 difficulties in uh, baby latch yeah and breast engorgement can cause pain which become an unpleasant experience for breastfeeding mothers Another challenge that mothers usually face is the inverted of, or cracked nipple. Inverted nipple problems are often found in the postpartum uh, period uh, because previously the mother maybe did not pay much attention to the shape of the nipple. And this is the reason for the midwife or maternity nurse to provide education related to breast care even before pregnancy. Uh, crack nipple usually occur during breastfeeding to, due to improper care, improperly latch, uh, baby latch, and dry nipples due to improper use of hygiene products. Uh, infant reflex also play an important role in successful breastfeeding, uh, but in promote babies, uh, physiologically reflex may not be well developed so the mother needs to provide appropriate stimulation so that the baby can suck well. Of course this takes time and sometimes cause frustration to the mother. So um, for the baby care, caring for baby is a challenge for parents, both new parents and those who have had children before. Of course, new parents may experience more difficulty in doing this because they do not have direct experience of caring for babies. Handling, bedding, burping, or calming the babies uh, require hands-on experience, so parents can be more flexible in carrying out their role in caring for babies. But sometimes um, uh, we are jokingly say that uh, when we putting the baby to bed and putting the baby to sleep, it's like the parents are on the battlefield full of mind. So uh, one wrong steps and then the baby will wake up and cry and it became uh, stressful for the parents. Yeah. But what we need to uh, educate to um, parents is that uh, 
babies is not only about sleeping. So uh, baby needs to be awake and stimulates to to uh, to make the development of their uh, their their body and brain is uh, increasing. So uh, don't make the baby sleep always, but you need to do the stimulation too for the baby. So the baby is awake is okay. Yeah. So uh, for the balance of physical self-care, when the baby is born, the main attention usually on the baby. So people around the mother and even the mother herself devote its attention to the baby and the needs of the baby. But sometimes forget about the baby, uh, about the mother who has made it through pregnancy and childbirth. In the postpartum period, it is very important that the mother's self-care is well managed. The challenge faced by mothers include managing rest period, adapting to physiological changes such as local discharge and uterine involution, which may be accompanied by pain. Mothers are also likely to experience uh, psychological changes due to hormonal fluctuation, as well as a desire to uh, immediately return to normal weight. So uh, when we talk about the role transition, the transition of motherhood is a complex matter that is related to the physical, psychological baby condition and their relationship with the people in their environment. So based on the concept of Rafa Rubin, an expert in maternity nursing, the transition of the role of being a mother involves a psychological adaptation process consisting of finding in by uh, being attached to and achieving a maternal role and comfortable uh, and the mother itself comfortable with the role. Uh, this stage is known as the taking in, taking hold and letting go phases. Uh, these stages, according to several studies, are closely related to each other. And it is possible that a mother who is in the taking in uh, phase or taking hold phase also has another phase component in, in the phase that she is experiencing. Um, Rubin's students, uh, Ramona Te Mercer, is a really famous uh, was it, uh, nursing theorist. Uh, in nursing, uh, developed the concept of Rubin and incorporated the interaction component into her theoretical framework. Mercer argues that the role and identity as a mother is highly dependent on maternal factors such as uh, self-concept, mother's experience and health, uh, condition of uh, baby's health and behavior, a mother relationship with her partner uh, environment and social support uh, received by the mother. Another challenge is uh, family planning. So when we talk about family planning, of course, it is related to the choice of the couple. Uh, the choice of contraception sometimes confuse mother because they do not know when to start contraception, the appropriate method, or how to access access the contraception and who will make the decision regarding the contraceptive use. Uh, most couples rarely discuss this, especially if their knowledge of contraception is lack and or if there are some beliefs and myths about contraceptive use. And sometimes in certain situations, uh, mothers and partners do not have enough time to consider what is the best option that they would uh, choose to be applied on mother or uh, for the father. Another challenge that some disadvantaged mother have to face is the health problems that occur during postpartum, such as bleeding, preeclampsia, infection, poor infant outcome, twins, and et cetera. Yeah. Uh, health problems that occur during the postpartum yeah. period can certainly yeah. slow, down, yeah. slow down the process of becoming a mother. And sometimes this situation causes the mother to experience psychological stress that interferes with the relationship between a mother and baby or a mother with the partner. 
Uh, comprehensive treatment and counseling will greatly help mother and their partner through these difficult times uh, and other postpartum uh, health problems. Uh, next, I will explain about postpartum care at home. Uh, so before conveying about home care by mother, I would like to remind my health professionals, uh, college about the main principles of postpartum care. And these principles are continuing evaluation and management of care and provides relief from physical discomfort, uh, provide assistance with breastfeeding, uh, facilitation of parenting, assessment of the baby during a home visit, uh, provides anticipatory guidance and instruction and screening or complication of the barbarian. Uh, WHO also uh, makes some recommendation uh, during, uh, for the postpartum care during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, the, the recommendation are maintaining uh, infection prevention control measures uh, like uh, proper hand washing, uh, using masks and uh, implementing physical distancing. And then postnatal visit and examination of the newborn should follow the WHO guidelines on danger signs, weight monitoring, and also feeding. Uh, postpartum care should include telemedicine. So telemedicine is quite uh, famous now and also a lot of uh, our midwife and nursing use this telemedicine to, to access the patient and to, to give uh, education to the patient. Uh, not only telemedicine, digital platform, mobile health application, and safe community outreach needs to be done. And the mother's mental health and well-being should be evaluated, yeah? Uh, along with recognizing signs of illness and ensuring care of uh, micronutrient supplementation, counseling of lactation, contraceptive uh, health environment, uh, screening and support for intimate partner violence. So because the intimate partner violence also increased during, during the pandemic and also the healthy child during postpartum period. And lastly, uh, all mothers should receive emotional and practical support to enable them to initiate and establish uh, breastfeeding. Home care for mothers like what was previously conveyed by uh, Dr. Leila. Yeah, so we uh, it is necessary to provide uh, education and training for mothers, family, or anyone who will provide support for, for mothers. Yeah, uh, Management of energy is in time we need to uh, we need to educate how uh, mothers do the management of energy. Uh, we need to educate that mother needs to adjust the baby need to adjust with the baby's sleep and wake cycle, and that mom needs to have time for herself to rest and enjoy her time alone. Of course, this requires cooperation from the partner. And the partner can help take care of the baby while the mother is resting, as well as uh, assisting the mother in doing household course. Uh, couples need to share tasks so that the transition of parenthood is successful. Um, especially in Indonesia, postpartum mothers are usually accompanied not only by their husband, but also by their mother or their mother-in-law who sometimes give inappropriate recommendation for the mother's well-being. Uh, midwives or nurses need to provide education and understanding to parents-in-law regarding proper postpartum care so the mothers will uh, gain benefit from, from the support. Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, family is actually a source of potential support, but Actually, when it's too intense and too demanding, uh, then the mother not uh, not going to feel supported, but will feel burden for for from the support. Uh, postpartum mothers do have to be ha do have to be able to maintain self hygiene, 
uh, but some some mothers who give birth by cesarean section may be experiencing a little difficulty in bedding and threshing at the beginning of their postpartum period. So uh, the partners needs to provide assistance in cleaning uh, the mothers uh, while at home. And it is uh, sorry. Uh, it is very important to. Uh, to mothers uh, in maintaining a balanced intake of nutrients and fruits during the postpartum because mothers need to recover themselves as well as to provide breast milk for their babies. Uh, for this reason, mothers should eat a balanced diet. Uh, usually the choice of food is in the maternal health book that is given during the pregnancy. Uh, we, can, uh, we can ask the mother to check in that, and we need to uh, uh, communicate, uh, building the communication with mothers, which uh, the choice of the nutrition. In addition to nutrition and fluids, mother also needs to do light to moderate exercise that is adjusted to the postpartum period that is being passed and postpartum mothers can also get massage uh, to provide a sense of comfort and also increase relaxation for the mother. After all, the self-care that can be done independently by the mother or with the help of her husband or family members, uh, it is necessary the mother knows about uh, where she can get uh, advice and uh, professional treatment uh, for the physical and psychological problem uh, occurs during the postpartum period. Uh, this is an example of uh, breast care. Breast care is actually uh, very simple. Uh, mothers must use a bra that is the right size and clean. And after the third day, breast milk production usually increase uh, as well as the hormone of oxytocin so that milk is released without uh, involuntarily. Uh, so when this uh, happens, then mothers need to put the breast pad on. So mothers need to change the breast pad regularly. Even when taking a bath, uh, mothers still can clean uh, the breast, but uh, needs to avoid using soap on the nipple area to prevent the nipples from drying out. And this is important so that the nipple is not easily uh, Lacerated or cracked. In addition, uh, mothers also need to uh, uh, to pump the breast milk regularly so that emptying uh, the breast uh, occurs and stimulates uh, another milk's production. Uh, this can also prevent mother from uh, engorgement, yeah, or we call it a pendungan asi in Bahasa. This is some example of slow to moderate exercise for mothers. You, you can do uh, some of range of movement. And if you or uh, if the mother is uh, a strength, uh, have a good strength, maybe we can do a plank, uh, a simple plank. Not too long, maybe 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, repeat it in uh, two or three cycles, it's enough. Yeah. Of course, you have to. Uh, the mothers needs to have a, a warming up first before doing the exercise to pro, uh, to prevent uh, what's it uh, strain. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this poster give us example uh, some of uh, massas. Uh, what's it? Uh, from how we do the massas. And uh, one thing needs to be noted is that uh, we don't press the skin too, too strong because uh, the principle of uh, giving massas is to give uh, pleasant feelings. And uh, we, do, we produce the pleasant feeling if we uh, give, uh, what is it, a good stroke. Uh, to stimulate the the peripheral nerves, yeah. Uh, if we press too strong, and then uh, what we press is not peripheral nerves, but uh, but that is the pain nerves. 
so the patient will feel a pain, not not comfort. Um, for increasing self confidence, yeah, um, we need to uh, the mothers need to maintain good relationship with the husband or partner, and also family and friends. Uh, mothers need to uh, seek knowledge from reliable sources about baby care and set realistic target. Yeah, mothers need to have a realistic target. For example, if a uh, mother cannot have, a, I want to uh, decrease my my weight uh, five or ten kilogram this week. Yeah, so it's it's impossible that yet uh, we need to uh, train the mother how to set the realistic target and uh, we also encourage mother to do the positive self-talk so positive self-talk uh, and some research already have a positive outcome uh, to increase the self uh, confidence and also uh, uh, what is it? Uh, self trust, yeah. And then uh, join uh, mothers or parents community also help. And uh, mothers need to have a hobby, yeah. Needs to do the hobby, uh, maybe regularly, or be one or two times a week. It's good. And then uh, mothers give reward for their own achievement during the postpartum period. Yeah, not only uh, setting the target, but also give achievement achievement for uh, achieving the target. Yeah, that's very very important. Yeah, I think that's all for from me. Yeah, this is the reference, and thank you uh, for your attention and also your participation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Ibu Tias. Health professional should try to overcome various challenges during postpartum, including baby care, family planning, breastfeeding, and physical care. Okay, we come to the, the end of the sessions. The, the session is discussions, and there are many questions that have been collected. And I will combine the several questions because almost the same. And the first question is addressed to midwife Fatima. This question is from Erlanga Fikrianto from Apikes Bandung at all. The question is, tokopobia can cause negative impact during pregnancy. As a midwife, please explain, explain important strategy to handle the situations, especially in pandemic era. In pandemic era and how to support pregnant women in a different culture. Please meet wife Fatima to give the explanations. Mohon bantuannya kepada panitia untuk bisa mengaktifkan suara. Uh, at the first, I would like to say uh, thank you for asking uh, this fascinating question. Uh, I think uh, this question has uh, two parts. Uh, and, uh, the first part is uh, how uh, we can uh, apply uh, such as uh, these uh, courses in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, yes. Uh, and then uh, how we can consider uh, some uh, uh, cultural and uh, communities uh, difference uh, in uh, uh, different uh, societies. So uh, now we are suffering from uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, and uh, we have to change uh, all uh, programs according to this uh, situation. Uh, 
Uh, for example, uh, now uh, uh, we are applying uh, most of our uh, courses, uh, educational courses in online, uh, in uh, different kinds of applications uh, for pregnant women and uh, try uh, to use uh, some uh, exercise courses uh, just in um, uh, privately, uh, for example, a midwife and a pregnant woman uh, that uh, we don't uh, have a um, concern about uh, getting a disease. Uh, and uh, I think it is so essential that uh, we uh, increase our psychological support and consulting meeting uh, for uh, pregnant women and also their uh, family uh, because their husband, their uh, family uh, should support these uh, women that uh, now is scared about a lot of things, not only about childbirth, about the uh, uh, situation of the hospital that maybe they are not safe uh, at the moment. And also uh, another part of this question that was about uh, considering uh, the uh, um, community culture, yes, exactly as Dr. Mosofi uh, uh, mentioned in the first part of this speech, uh, uh, we have a different kinds of uh, community uh, culture and uh, uh, at the first, I think uh, we have to uh, have a, a, a counseling meeting uh, with uh, that group of people and uh, consider uh, their um, uh, ideas about uh, uh, how they want to uh, apply uh, and how much they afraid about the one reasons. And then uh, we can uh, apply uh, uh, such a uh, a special program for that group. For example, uh, in a, uh, some group of people, we can apply music, different kinds of music uh, for them, and uh, some group of people prefer uh, to uh, uh, apply uh, just Quran uh, for them and uh, the being calm uh, with a message of God. Uh, so it is essential, you know, and uh, familiar with uh, your group completely. I, I hope uh, I answer it completely. <laughs> okay, thank you, midwife Fatima. The next explanations. Um, we come to the second questions. This question addressed to Ibu Tias. Pertanyaan ini dari Aisyah dan kawan-kawan. Pertanyaannya yaitu, how to overcome health issues related postpartum such as infections, because as a nurse, we need to control that issues to prevent complications. Mohon kepada Ibu Tias untuk menjelaskan. All right, uh, thank you for the questions. So uh, the question is about overcome uh, the infection, yeah, how to prevent the infection and how to overcome it. I think, uh, first of all, uh, this is uh, multisectorial uh, for for the first. Uh, it's about the treatment during the during the patient in the hospital or in the primary care where they uh, give birth, and also uh, in the society uh, where the mother is living. So the the sector needs to be uh, prepared for the mothers uh, uh, correctly. So. Uh, in the hospital or primary care, uh, we do the aseptic uh, treatment. So, especially for the infection, it's it's really rarely happens in the hospital or in the primary care. But uh, during their time at home, uh, sometimes the mothers uh, use uh, different kind of products or maybe the sanitation of the the water and uh, maybe the clothing. Yeah. So uh, sometimes uh, those, uh, those kind of uh, hygiene can, can affect the infection, um, can affect to infection, yeah. So, and then uh, how to prevent it is, uh, the, the first thing is education, yeah. Well, how we educate the patients, how to do the for hygiene and how to maintain the nutrition to uh, provide uh, barrier uh, for the mothers to getting infection. 
And also, uh, we need to evaluate and talk with the mothers and family. Do they have uh, some kind of uh, traditional treatment for the cool for hygiene? Sometimes in some uh, tradition, uh, we give uh, some, what, what do you call it? Maybe in, in uh, so we call it jamu or ramuan that is being applied to the the wound of the mothers, uh, not only for the mothers uh, give birth in normal break and normal birth, but also uh, for the cesarean section. Sometimes they apply the, the the traditional mixture. So we need to discuss about that thing, and we need to educate people, and not only to say don't do this and don't do that, but uh, we need to. Uh, talk with them uh, what is being good and what is being uh, not really good and how uh, they can still do the traditional but uh, not affecting the health of the mothers. I think uh, it needs a lot of communication uh, and education and sometimes we need to provide kits yeah uh, sometimes we need to provide kits uh, uh, hygiene kits for for the mothers if you want to them to have a good uh, good uh, for example uh, wound treatment thank you ya terima kasih ibu tias atas jawabannya ini masih ada satu lagi ibu untuk ibu tias dari Devi Putri Gitasari dari Boyolali pertanyaannya ibu bagaimana caranya mengatasi stres selama pandemi ini, terutama bagi ibu yang baru saja melahirkan. Uh, thank you for uh, who's the name? Gita ibu. The, Mungkin bisa dijelaskan oh, Gita, dengan yeah. bahasa Indonesia yeah. juga ibu. Pertanyaan oh, oh, oh. bahasa. Uh, I will yeah. okay explain in bahasa. Yeah, I'm so sorry for other speaker. I will I will say it in bahasa. Jadi uh, caranya kita menghindari stres selama pandemi, terutama pada ibu postpartum, tentunya uh, adalah berkomunikasi dengan uh, pasangan ya, dan juga keluarga membangun komunikasi yang baik, membangun komunikasi yang baik uh, itu uh, bisa membantu karena dengan komunikasi yang uh, keluarga ataupun suami juga bisa memahami apa yang ibu itu rasakan begitu ya bagaimana ibu itu ingin mungkin seperti yang saya jelaskan tadi ada pembagian tugas gitu ada asistensi selama uh, di rumah memang agak sulit ya kalau nanti misalnya itu adalah nuclear family jadi familynya itu hanya terdiri dari ibu ayah dan bayi seperti itu nah kalau ibunya sih dikasih uh, apa cuti selama tiga bulan misalnya tapi kan Ayah mungkin hanya dua atau tiga hari sudah kembali bekerja. Nah ini memang menjadi suatu tantangan tersendiri bagi ibu, apalagi ini masanya masa pandemi di mana ibu ini tidak bisa mungkin mengakses support dari teman atau yang lain. Tetapi tentunya karena sekarang juga zamannya teknologi ya, mungkin bisa kita melakukan komunikasi ya dengan orang-orang yang terdekat atau yang menurut kita bisa memberi support kepada kita. Jadi tetap membangun komunikasi itu. Kemudian memberikan waktu uh, tersendiri bagi ibu ya. Jadi ibu itu perlu me time lah istilahnya gitu ya, me time. Kalau misalnya dia hobinya nonton drakor ya, berarti harus ada me time untuk nonton drama Korea gitu. Ngomong sama suaminya, ya aku nanti uh, saya enggak stres gitu aku minta waktu satu jam aja untuk nonton uh, misalnya apa uh, my roommate is gumio misalnya kayak gitu ya <laughs> jadi minta waktu satu jam aja jam berapa nanti kita sepakati bersama intinya adalah komunikasi ya kesepakatan bersama bicara berkomunikasi kalau saya yakin karena misalnya pada ibu-ibu muda ya ibu muda ya, suami istri masih masih ideal gitu ya cara pandangnya masih ideal masih saling mensupport saling rasa sayang cintanya itu masih in the honeymoon stage gitu ya itu saya rasa harusnya bisa menerima gitu ya jadi apa suami juga bisa menerima bahwa istri butuh waktu untuk dirinya sendiri 
istri karena seorang istri itu bukan hanya istri dan ibu tapi seorang istri adalah seorang individu ya, seorang individu yang membutuhkan waktu untuk dirinya sendiri untuk memahami apa yang terjadi dalam kehidupan jadi itu caranya supaya kita terhindar dari stres ya. dan melakukan hobi-hobi ya tadi ya hobi-hobi exercise itu juga mengurangi stres ya jadi Hormon kortisol itu bisa dikurangi dengan melakukan exercise. Jadi kalau kita kita kira sudah stres, coba lakukan gerakan-gerakan uh, low to moderate untuk bisa menghilangkan uh, stres itu. Terima kasih. Ya. Terima kasih Ibu Tias. Kita langsung ya ke pertanyaan yang terakhir dari Suci Universitas Airlangga dan kawan-kawan. This question addressed to Bapak Kamal, the question is, according to pandemic in Indonesia, there has been an increase in the number of marriage and pregnancies, but the mortality rate also increased. How we as the public health professional motivate or give health promotion to young girl? Does delaying pregnancy become one of the best choice? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. The thick, excellent question, but hard to answer. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, on the pandemic gap and uh, COVID-19, it's easy for us to coordinate or contact with the other people by using the social media on or like a mobile phone or like WhatsApp and others. But especially uh, sometimes in Bhutia and Batimi, we only uh, the health provider in the Puskesmas or the 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 ground level uh, focus on the COVID nineteen. Yeah. You know, yeah. okay, let's focus on nineteen, but save the mother's uh, pregnancy also. Yeah, and then what about the teenagers? Teenagers now they focus using the social media and the mobile phone every day, but at that time they forgot. There's many chance for them to read how to prepare they to be a mother's in the future, how to they exercise like Nutia say, uh, they also exercise and also nutrition uh, strategy, how to what the food uh, good for the healthy or no, uh, what about the uh, sorry, uh, how about the coordinate with the other people like. Uh, uh, like our provider also advise them. Uh, for example, it's easy for us also uh, by, by using the according to with the student, uh, student in the university, they also in the field right now. We can call them how to say, how to advise many, many mothers to protect their kids or their teenagers to even to, to select what the information good for them uh, especially for the the healthy or not not, not good. So I think it's very important for us. But the sometimes mother also uh, busy by themselves only. <laughs> they focus for their activities, but forget their the the kids. What they do? Are they happy? Oh my my kids now know the the picture. No can uh, watch the TV or can watch the YouTube, but they don't know. What what the side effect for the social media if they don't understand? So I think by using the student or by the health provider, can we uh, collaborate together how to protect the teenagers by using the educate and then health promotion by using uh, also like, like print paper like a poster like brochure. Um, I think so, Emma. Thank you, Bapak Kamal. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate for the great explanations from all of the speakers today. And now, um, allow me to give the conclusions in Bahasa because the majority of participants come from Indonesia. Peserta seminar yang berbahagia, berdasarkan pemaparan materi yang sangat luar biasa dari narasumber tiga negara, ada beberapa poin yang perlu digarisbawahi. Pertama, tenaga kesehatan masyarakat merupakan penggerak masyarakat untuk mempersiapkan keluarga dan generasi yang sehat serta berkolaborasi dengan tenaga kesehatan lainnya. 
Kedua, bidan merupakan fasilitator dan sahabat calon ibu yang memberikan asuhan kebidanan yang aman dan nyaman selama proses kehamilan dan persalinan dengan membentuk mindset yang baik. Dan yang ketiga, perawat berperan dalam memberikan asuhan keperawatan postpartum, terutama terkait dengan personal hygiene dan dukungan kesehatan mental ibu muda. That's all for the sessions and thank you so much for the time and the change and I will give it back to the MC. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to the moderator and speakers who have delivered such a great presentation. Hopefully the discussion can widen our insights into how to plan a healthy family and to form a healthy and normal mindset of pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum. So ladies and gentlemen, we have done the main session of the seminar. And now we would like to thank all the team, the committee has worked hard in this uh, seminar and the media partners who supported this event as well. Once again, we'd like to thank all the amazing speakers, uh, Ms. Fatima Gotsi, uh, Ms. Leila Mustafi, Ms. Yes Kusumaningrom, and also Mr. Kamal Kasra. And we also thank all the audiences for joining the seminar. And we hope the discussion and all the knowledge we gain here can be insightful for us. Uh, before we close this event, uh, we would like to invite all participants in the Zoom room to take pictures together. Um, so I will handle this uh, taking pictures. So please be ready. And I'll be taking pictures in three, two, one, smile again. I'll be taking pictures in three, two, one, again, smile again, smile three, two, one. And once again, thank you for the attention and we'd like to apologize for the mistakes and inconvenience. Keep staying healthy and see you in the next event. Thank you so much thank you, thank and you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, 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 semuanya Terima kasih semuanya. Oh, ini Aku Tiga dua, empat, lima,